Okay, this particular film here was made by Dewey Hesse from the Hesse Jewelry Store, which had their business in the corner of the Weekman building. And for many, many years, he, <clears throat> all the films that he shot were usually of downtown Saginaw, the Hoyt Park area, many other things that happened on the Saginaw River years ago, and he was one of the few people to have a 60 millimeter camera. At that time, it cost a lot of money to make the type of film that he has here, but he did a fantastic job on it, but, uh, considering the fact that a lot of it's all handheld. Here we are down by uh, West Michigan Street, where it goes into the, was it Maple Street? Down in the South Saginaw, it's one of the laying of the new track. They've taken up the tracking uh, that goes into Riverside Park, and we're laying new track here. This is the time you take back then when you start to watch the, the labor the fellows went through. It was really something. Here's one of the old, the more newer trolley cars that went into Riverside Park. The first ones didn't have the glass windows, they just had curtains. And I uh, can't make out the date on the front of that, but here they are taking up more again of the track. There's the old Sonora plant over on the left and the Sonora plant on the right. The overhead pass where you walk from one plant to the other. Those are called guides. They used to put those in the track to make sure that everything was straight and solid. Here they had to make the forms again, which went in there. There were cement forms that they made first, and then they had the big metal blocks that they put in there to reinforce the tracking. There's the old way of making cement. Today it's all done with the Great big trucks, and it's all pre-mixed to get to your place. Here, that's all had to be done on the job. Push it over by a wheelbarrow, dump it, and put it back in place. This was the old Park Hotel, which was down on South Michigan Street. It's long been torn down. It's in the area where I think it's called Peter's Bar, Peter's Bar, Peter's House of Beef. It's one of the contractor's yards where they store the railroad track. They had salt there, barrel staves, many things that the contractors would use all the time that all under one roof. This is inside the Griffin Brothers Tin Shop. Well, these two fellows here not only did wonderful work of uh, anything that you want to do in your home with tin, but their hobbies was making boats, airplanes, submarines, everything out of tin. The only thing that's not tin on that whole ship right here is the paint. All the sails, all the rope, everything solid tin. There you can see he has to form a piece of tin, thin it out with a hammer, get it to the right size cut it down, get it to fit, put it in place. Just a beautiful job. I'd seen one of these ships here at a Lions Club once. I showed this film and the fellow brought one of these beautiful sailboats here, about three and a half foot long. Just worth thousands of dollars today. This is one boat here that sailed from Saginaw to St. Charles, so 63 people made that trip up there and down twice a day. Here's one of the scenes over at Hoyt Park, there's Holy Family Church in the background. Take a look at that classic car, there's a beauty for you. A lot of the titles that are in this film were made by Dewey Hesse, and I've left them right in there intact as much as possible. It's one of the backyard scenes of the old car trying to start it up. Here we are out on Wadsworth Street, where Hesse's first lived before they moved into Saginaw. You see, there wasn't much traffic in that road. There was very few people around that could afford a brand new car like at that, that time.
Okay. People walk on either side of the street. Here we are down to the east end of Hoyt Park. It was a dirt, <coughs> excuse me, a dirt road before they had it tarried over. I guess that was a place where they used at the time to show off all their new cars. See the traffic will pick up here in a little while. This film was made between 1913 and 1927. All the features you see in here, and it's, it's amazing how good a shape this film is yet. Here we are down by Genesee and Jefferson, one of the many, many parades. This fellow photographed more parades than anybody that I know of. In fact, he photographed all the U of M football games years ago, which we shipped to the U of M to put in their library down there. Angle parking, sometimes you look at the traffic and they're parked two, three deep on both sides of the street. This, I believe, was a, one of the Armistice Day parades. You can tell by the way that the people are dressed and, of course, the different people that are in the parade itself. Left-hand corner, there's a police lookout station up there that's used to direct the traffic. This film, when I got it, was a solid mildew. It was just something that, <clears throat> excuse me, even though I picked it up off the curb with hundreds of thousands of other feet of film, it was something I was tempted to throw away many times and finally got it down where it was cleaned up and then duplicated onto this new film like you see here because the old film was nitrate film and it would explode. So actually, uh, it isn't too bad a shape. There's a lot of scratches that was in there at the time years ago and blotches go through it but it's a one-of-a-kind film there's no other one like it this is the the only one now that's left from all of the films that he shot this is looking south on warren street east on uh, lapeer street the old modar company down at the far top corner of the picture. This is looking now from the top, which was uh, then the uh, Feeds building, looking down toward the Second National Bank building. Barry's Dry Goods Store over on the left-hand side. Little Jake on top of the tower building, which was taken off during the Second World War, melted down. This is when Saginaw downtown was a real thriving business. Now there's a lot of scenes here taken from the air. These were taken out at, which is now the Harry Brown Airport. Before that, it was the James Airport. But it was first called the Junior Chamber of Commerce Airport. Stubble field, had no runways at all, just strictly a stubble field. Those planes took off and landed out there without any problem whatsoever. But Dewey was one who not only was a wonderful engraver and a jeweler, but he, he built airplanes, he built boats, beautiful, gorgeous sailboats. I've seen pictures of those, he built airplanes, and just one fantastic guy. Here he's moved into town now, you can see he's got his car parked out in front of his house. Take a look at the snow on the top of the roof and the running boards, get right in there, start it right up and take off. Today, if you tried that with a car, you'd stall out, look at there. Nothing to it. This is back down by Genesee and Jefferson again. There's his wife walking across the street right here. Now there's his daughter and his wife. Uh, the little girl is in her late, late 60s right now. The mother just died here a couple of years ago down Florida. Just inside the jewelry store there, Genesee and Jefferson, looking across the street. The building on the corner there is 
Shops Drugstore, which has long been torn down. Right next to it, there is the, what is now the Michigan National Bank. But at that time when it was built, it was called the New American State Bank. That's when it was first being built. Another one of the outdoor backyard scenes I left in just because of the old car. Probably one of the first car wrecks in town, but now watch the big, beautiful wrecker. Look at that, real classic. And you can see there the crowd, of course, wherever you have a wreck at the time. Crowds gather to see what's happening and go on their way. Another one of the parades, there's the police department going through. Some of the fellows from the Army, followed by some of the fellows from the Navy. And the fire department, then the Boy Scouts. Downtown Saginaw, just like the shows here, they had crowds of people. Always had crowds of people for parades. Here they're parked, I think, one, two, three cars deep on each side. And uh, people really, really turned out for a parade. There's the Hesse Jewelry story there. Now this was a little area that was down by the, what's called Ojibwe Island, where they had horse shows. They had some beautiful, gorgeous horses. People got into these parades and they vied for ribbons or cups, or whatever they gave away at the time. They look at those cars and circling the whole place, which they would be worth millions of dollars. At that time, probably a car maybe run you about $900 or so like that, but today the value of all those cars in that shape would be just one fantastic sum. This was the first Ford Trimotor airplane. It landed out here, out on James Road. You notice that the, when the plane lands out there, they don't have to have much runway for either landing or takeoff. The plane was actually way, way, way ahead of its time. Three engines on the, on the plane there, it held about 26 to 28 people. And there you can see it just landing right there in the stubble field, no runway gravel runway, just a stubble field. That's all you really had to have for takeoff and landing. And less than a block, they could be up in the air or land in a short distance. Here's the takeoff of the first flight, leaving out of Saginaw here. There's only nine of these planes throughout the world today that are still flying. They're so beautiful, but like I say, they're way ahead of their time. All the titles, like I say, that are you see here are ones that Dewey shot himself, so all of this part I just left right intact. There's only two people I can recognize here. One is Guy Garber Sr. and Gus Schuss, who used to have the Schuss Bakery Company. That's Gus right there, right there on the end. And of course you got the 
Honorable Benton Hanchett, 92 year old, getting out of the plane of his first plane ride, probably the last plane ride he ever took too. shoot. When you went to the Temple Theater, you had to sit down and watch what happened on the in town the week before, where the previews and the cartoons and the coming attractions came on. Then you'd have these little newsettes that you'd show and let you know what happened and what happened really inside you know, the week before. Here's a speedboat race down by Ojibwe Island. St. Andrew's Church in the far background. Actually, that water, as you see right there, was really good, clear, clean water because later on, you see them cutting ice from practically about the same spot, the storage to the, into the ice houses, which they sold for people who put them in their ice boxes. So this water then had to be real good, good, clear water. Park, of course, was one of the many real good playgrounds that they had in Saginaw at the time. There's Forney Park, there's Hoyt Park, Bliss Park. It wasn't an awful lot of them, but they were, they were beautiful, beautiful parks. You could go there and have your picnics. Kids would play games. Take a look at the clothes that they're wearing. They got dungarees and uh, overalls and bibs, and that's just what the kids are wearing today. I think, look at the youngsters out there that are playing around out there. They're all grandparents. Probably great grandparents of some of them there. Junior Board of Commerce Airport, that's what it was when it first opened up out on Jane's. Stand a couple places in town where they built airplanes here. There was, again, of course, mostly it was all automotive, so like that, but there was a couple companies back then that where they built airplanes right here and sent them all over the country. The majority of the scenes you see here that Dewey's film was all on the east side of town because the, the west side of the town was actually not built up then at all. 
everything was on the east side. Looking west on Genesee toward the Genesee Street Bridge, Second National Bank down there on the corner, the Genesee Johnson Street Bridge there. Now here you got 6,000 people to watch Saginaw High and North the Hill both graduate at the same time at Hoyt Park and yet a total of 357 graduates between the two schools. And 6,000 people turn out to watch it. It looks like they're going through there fast to get their diploma. I'm sure the, the speed of the camera was filmed or speeded up more at that time, but if you look at the ferns in the background, it looks like there may have been a storm coming up, and they just probably want to get them in and get them out and get them on their way. There's the old barn out on James Road, which is still standing out there yet. Used for storage of planes and parts and so on. So the Ford Tri-Motor coming back again, and first time they had all the fellas that were around then uh, take the flight out. This time they had a couple of the fellas on there, and the rest were women that took the first flight. Which I imagine time time was uh, was quite a thrill. A lot of people then probably had never been on a plane before in their life and decided to do it. Here we are on White Park. See, there's no snow there, but the grass looks there, the snow, the ice looks real good and solid. There's no snow there at all, but this uh, White Park at that time there used to be thousands of people, just literally thousands of people down there to go down there every single night. There's the Howley Brothers. They toured all over and gave uh, lessons on figure skating. I think there's only one of the brothers that is still living yet, but they were experts. They were really, really experts at figure skating. George's popcorn wagon sitting down in the same spot. I think he got about a hundred year lease on that spot. Crack the whip, everybody had to do that at that time. That was the easiest way there was to break your neck. But it was fun. Everything was all good, clean fun then. There's the Hamilton Square Fire. That took out many business places there. I understand it was a drugstore, cigar store, part of the hotel. It was happening in the wintertime because you can see the, the ice is frozen to the sides of the building there where they're pumping the water on there. And here they're harvesting ice in the Saginaw River, January the 1st, 1927. Even though it was a holiday, they had to make a living for their family. So it wasn't like one of those things where you sit down and you watch the Rose Bowl today and sponsor for it. You had to get out there and earn a living. They probably got 30, 35 cents an hour, but they were still putting food on the table then. Saginaw Ice and Coal Company. Of course, you have the conveyor belt there. All of the ice was cut by a machine, gasoline-driven uh, machine in the vertical lines. And, and then this fella come by here and start cutting it up into blocks. But before that, as you see here just a while, they had a team of horses which would come out and uh, cut the uh, 
I'd take the snow off first. Take the snow off first, and they would come by. Here's this outfit here. Cut it in long, long strips. And then the fella did it the hard way with the saw to cut it in the blocks. Then fed into a line with poles, and then up to the conveyor belt, which went into the building itself and stored, covered up with uh, sawdust so that in the summertime, why individuals could go ahead and when the ice truck went by, you look, had you sign the window, 25, 50, or 75 pounds, and that's what they brought into you. One fellow was showing us out at the Reese, the Lions Club out there, and he would come out there and bring his horses to clean off the ice. And three of his horses went through the ice at the time, and of course drowned. And... But this was a hard way of making a living, working on a holiday. Now these are the Lee brothers. One was 87, one was 91. The only way I found that out, I was showing this one night at a group. Somebody said, how old are those fellas? And I said, I have no idea. And the fellow said behind me said, my father was 91 and my uncle was 87 at the time when they were figure skating here. And one of the two, I don't know which, was one of the uh, mayors of Saginaw years ago. This part is a little bit fuzzy, which is in the film itself. I didn't want to take it out because it's the only film that I know that's available with these two brothers who are just super fantastic. They travel all over the country, put on their demonstration of figure skating, and of course you take a look at them there at that age. Doesn't look like we've got much arthritis set in there. But they're just super good. Oh, look at there. Look at the twist he does here. Boy, Dorothy Hamill would envy that at that age anytime. This is one of the Knights Templar parades. Louis Blanc to the Knights Templar. In fact, he was the, I don't know what they call him, the potentate or whatever it is, or so like that, but he was, at 28 years old, he led the whole state in the Knights Templars. coming down Genesee, make the turn to swing down Genesee Street, heading down toward Genesee and uh, Baum, Genesee and Franklin. That's the end of that film. <laughs>